Hey everybody, welcome back to Drawbridge Finance. Today we're talking about RRSP loans. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Levi Woods. I'm not a professional investor. I don't work in the financial industry. And this is an opinion channel about money. Today I want to talk to you guys about RSP loans. And this is a pretty uh, touchy subject because basically the, the theory behind RSP loans is that you're going to borrow money, you're going to go to the bank and borrow money, then you're going to take that money to invest it in something. Now, you can invest in, in a guaranteed investment certificate and, and make a guaranteed return. Usually that, that return is less than the amount of interest that you're paying on the loan. So it's a, it's a bit touchy to try to get those guaranteed investments to pay more than the interest it doesn't usually work out. So what most people do is they invest in the stock market or they invest in an ETF that's gonna potentially return an average rate of return that's greater than the amount for the loan. If we go to the bank and we get a loan for say four and a half or four and three quarters percent, but we know that the S&P 500 returns around 7.8% on average per year, then in theory, the, the loan will cost us less than the return on the investment. Now, RSP loans are, are interesting because they're available to Canadians and what they do is they allow the borrower to borrow money to invest specifically into their RSP before the RSP deadline of the end of February. What this does is it increases the amount of, of refunds that they get when they do their income tax. Now, RSPs are, you know, they're, they're not the best financial vehicle because we eventually have to pay that tax in the future. So it's something to take into consideration what the marginal tax rate actually is and I'll cover that in this video. Uh, but what, what it allows people to do is start investing without actually having any money right now today. For, for myself, I actually did this. I have taken two RSP loans in my life because when I was young, I knew that I needed to start investing. They were not well-timed um, because I was invested in the broad market. We know that we had the dot-com crash uh, in the 2000s, 1999-2000, and I lost a substantial amount of that money that I had borrowed to invest. So I know firsthand that this is, is a risky thing to do. Um, but what that did was it set me on a path that I had continued for the rest of my investing career because I knew that from that day when I was 18 years old, I knew that I had to make a, a, a payment basically into my future self so that my investment could grow over time. And by having that loan, it, it created a pattern which I still follow today. So something that I did when I was 18, I'm now doing when I'm 39. So 21 years I've been contributing to this investment plan and that's why I'm able to be able to be retired later this year. So what I want to do today is I want to do some fictional character analysis and we're going to compare two people that are uh, both 18 years old. They both uh, work minimum wage, kind of part time during the school year and then full time during the summer months. And so they have an average income of $15,000 per year. Their current investment value is $0. And we're, the reason that I'm using this small figure is because I'm gonna look at the marginal tax rate for these characters. Both of them are, they're friends and they decide that they're going to, that in 2019 is the year that they need to start investing. And they both wanna contribute 16.7% of their income. So 16.7% of their income works out to $2,500. And they and, and that seems like a reasonable goal. So both of them make an agreement to each other. They say, okay, next month in March, we're going to start to each of us are going to take $250, put it into our RSP. And at the end of the year, 10 months from now, we will have contributed $2,500 each. First, we'll look at Bob's scenario. RSP contribution for Bob is really, really simple. He's going to go to the bank. He's going to open up an RSP account. He's going to set up an automatic contribution of $250. So in March, March 1st, $250 is gonna get transferred from his savings account to his RSP account, and then that money is gonna start theoretically growing at, we're gonna say a 7% rate of return because I have shown many times how easy it is to get a 7% rate of return. If you're interested in that, there's a video link right up here. You can click on that. You can see how to make a 7% return. Very easy chart. He puts in $250, it makes a little bit of money, makes $1.46 in the first month. So his total value at the end of March is gonna be $251.46 in theory. Now in April 1st, he puts in $250. So now at the end of April, his total value, a little bit of interest, uh, and we're basically at $504. Carry on through the year. At the end of the year, he's contributed $2,500. His investment is worth $2,581. 
So he's made a total profit of 81.63. And this is average and theoretical. So, you know, uh, you take that into account when you're looking at any of these sh spreadsheets. Now, Alice, what she's going to do is she's going to say, you know, I, I can be smarter about this. I can put the whole $2,500 in right now and I can get a larger refund from my tax return that is deferred taxes that, and then I can pay it later in my life when I, when I have more money. So she does a quick search on the internet and she comes up with an RSP loan calculator. I'll leave a link down in the description below for the websites that I'm using today. She wants to borrow 2,500, that's her goal, $2,500. Is this a top up loan? No, this is brand new. The loan repayment period, we're gonna say one year because she wants to pay it back within the same year that Bob does. The payment frequency, she's gonna make a monthly payment. Now the interest rates, this, this is gonna vary depending on your situation, but I'm gonna put in a 4.75% interest rate. And then do you want to defer the start of your loan repayment by up to 90 days? I'm gonna say no, because in this case, Alice is going to start contributing next month in March anyway. So she's gonna make her very first loan payment of $250, that's how much she's gonna invest, the same as Bob on March 1st. So we're not gonna defer the, the payment, and then we're gonna click continue. So tax information, wants your marginal tax rate. Now, in order to figure that out, uh, there's a, here's another website that I found. I've typed in the, the income, 15,000, click to calculate. The marginal tax rate for British Columbian living on $15,000 a year is around 20%. Super easy calculation. There's many websites out that will tell you what your marginal tax rate is based on what your income is. We'll go back to the loan and we know the marginal tax rate is 20%. So we'll type that in 20% and then the percentage of tax refund to apply to the loan balance. Now, this is the, the most important part about this type of strategy. Because you're making this investment in the RSP, then your refund from your income tax is gonna be greater. So the worst thing that anyone could do is go and just spend that tax refund because they've borrowed money to, to invest and then they're getting more money back from their refund. If they spend it, the money's just gone. So what needs to happen is they need to take that refund and apply it to this loan. So we're gonna say, 100% of the, the return that we're getting is going to go to uh, back to the loan. Now, we know that if the marginal tax rate is 20%, we invest $2,500, 20% of $2,500 is going to be $500. So our income tax refund is going to be increased by $500 more than if we had made this RSP contribution. So that $500 is going to go back to the RSP loan. And you'll see that in the chart when we fill this out. So we're going to click continue. Estimated annual rate of return. RBC wants to say 6%. I'm gonna put in 7% here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll look at that even if it's at 0%. We'll look at how the benefits or, or non-benefits of this work out in the end. So the number of years to retirement. Now, both of these characters are 18 years old. So we're gonna say they're gonna re retire at uh, 65. So 47 years and click continue. You have to remember, this is from a $2,500 investment. If your $2,500 investment in one year if you hold it for 47 years at a 7% rate of return, your RSP is going to be worth $60,000. 2,500 becomes $60,000. This is the power of compound interest. The expected tax refund in $2,500. We knew that it was going to be 500 because we can do that math. It's 20%, which is what the marginal tax rate is. If your marginal tax rate is lower, then you're going to get less money back. If your marginal tax rate is higher, you'll get more money back. So the amount of tax refund to apply to the loan, $500. That's the super important part. The payment that Alice has to make is actually only $213.73. Now we said at the beginning of the video, both of them are gonna invest $250. So she sets up this automatic loan payment for $213. Now the remaining $36 is gonna go into her RSP. So she's gonna add that as a supplementary payment. And I'll fill that out in the, in the chart. Now the total cost, the total interest cost, and this is important for everybody, like how much is it gonna cost me to borrow this $2,500 for the year and repay it back? The total interest cost is only $50. It's relatively low. And this is based on that 4.75% interest rate that we put in. So the adjusted loan amortization is 10 months. So basically she's gonna have it paid off by the end of 10 months. We're gonna look at the loan amortization table. We're gonna click on that. And basically what that shows us is that the loan balance is 2,500. The first payment of $213, 213 goes to principal, zero goes to interest, and the, the loan balance is paid down. Then the, the next month you still make a payment of 213, the principal's 194, and the interest is 1895. So this 1895 is actually the interest for, for both months. I don't know why it's calculating out like that, but that's what it's doing. 
Third month, $213, the principal $205, $8 in interest. This is in the fourth month where Alice has taken her $500 extra and she's applied that as an extra payment to the loan. So her payment, instead of being $213, is actually $713. So she still pays a little bit of interest, but a huge amount goes to the principal. We scroll down to the bottom and we can see that at month 10 or in December, the, the balance on the loan remaining is zero and she has in, invested her $2,500. Now let's put this into a spreadsheet to show the returns on investment. So if we go back to our sheet, I've copied and pasted the information from the RBC website. See the payments, 213, 213, 213. This larger one of $500 more, 713, right down to the bottom and the, the loan balance goes down. We can see the calculation, how much interest is paid, works out to the same. What happens with the RSP? Immediately when she gets the loan, she she owes that money, but she takes that money and she puts it into the RSP. So we're going to RSP contribution of 2,500. Now the RSP value is 2,500. As I said before, they're going to, she's going to invest $250 per month. 213 plus 36.27 equals 250. So that her, her contribution per, per month is the same as Bob's, $250. So the value is increasing a little bit faster. At the end of the year, when we look at all of these payments, she's made a total payment of $2,500 out of pocket over the course of the year. Of course, this doesn't include the $500 refund that she got because that was money that she wouldn't have gotten had she not put in the money into the RSP. The RSP value is at dollars and she has put in 2,500. So she has effectively made $611 compared to Bob's $81. And there's one other factor that we have to consider, and that's the $2,500 that Bob put in during 2019. In 2020, in his return, he's actually gonna get the same $500 back that Alice received in extra refund. And this is kind of a residual thing. I'm actually gonna make a separate video on this, so I'll put the link up above when I've got that in there, and you guys can check out that video because it's gonna show the breakdown, the trickle down effect of the marginal tax rate and the uh, RSP refund that you get from that. Anyways, I'm gonna show you the quick numbers. We're just gonna go through it. But basically what happens is each year subsequently, if they keep reinvesting that refund, they just continue to get a little bit more of an extra refund. Looking at after five years of residual income, $2,500 invested by Alice is worth $4,519. The $2,500 invested by Bob is worth $4,483. The difference is less than $40 difference between the two. If we change this rate to 0%, even though the RSP value was greater at the beginning in this lump sum, she's actually returned less at a 0% return. So the big takeaway from this is, you know, Alice is making a little bit more money. She's paying definitely some interest. She actually makes a little bit more return because she's invested sooner. But if the market is going down, Bob's getting the benefit of dollar cost averaging. And I think for the amount of work that Alice had to do, applying for the loan, making sure the loan payments go through, transferring extra money in with her RSP each month, and Bob just has a straight up contribution. I mean, I would personally would probably go with Bob's approach just Make that contribution automatic and get rich over the long term. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't turned on your notifications bell and let's get rich together.